Yeah, that one, so, uh, what time is it? Uh, the, it is almost, oh shit, it's almost 7 o'clock. It's, it's 9.45. <laughs> on uh, what day? On Sunday, July 21st, the last day of Comic-Con. It is officially over, or it's been officially over for about four hours now, or five, almost five hours. And, uh, uh, we're just going to go through, uh, you want yeah, a quick uh, overview of, uh... We're just going to go through a hall. And here it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> It's not too bad. Yeah, it's not. It's not terrible. It's, it's not actually bad. Pretty good. Split between four people. Uh, last year it was like six or seven. Um, I mean, we got some of Fernando stuff here. So, um, and, and so, uh, some of this stuff is other people's stuff um, that I, you know, picked up for other people. So, you know, like, uh, yeah, I think it's uh, it's not as bad. It's not bad as last year. Um, or we had no regard yeah, for no regard for. A budget we kind of just like take our money take our money take our money um but yeah i think i did i did a lot better than i did last year last year i definitely 100 percent went over budget and i actually had more money budgeted this time i had less money budgeted but i was only about five bucks over so good on me <laughs> good job um so i guess we just start right yeah um so just i guess we do like the freebies real fast i got this uh anakin skywalker from um ffg in his, uh, yeah, what do you call it? Delta, um, Jedi Starfighter. I got these from Ryan. This is the freebie from, uh, Hall H. So they're just Infinity Stone cards. I don't know if there's descriptions on the back. I'll open it later. Um, I got a free Batman sticker. Uh, here. <laughs> um, let's start, let's do this one first. Uh, the 40th anniversary of Gundam, uh, this year. Um, so I got free lanyard from their booth, and they're doing 100 um, an hour. So they're rationing them out. Uh, next is Koholint Koho Lint Link. Um, we got for free from the Nintendo Lounge that we wait, totally waited the whole three to four hour line or two oh, to three man. hour line. Yeah, it was Jeez. super long. It was disgusting. We didn't really wait two three hours. Yeah, we we uh, <laughs> wait, wait. How long do we? We uh, we. So what happened was we ran into uh, Ashley. Um, you might know her from her Instagrams, either like Call Me Ashley or or uh, I Am the Sunday. Yeah. Uh, so she's uh, we met her to Brian, um, and uh, we met up. I actually that was actually supposed to be my Star Wars day where I spent all day, but I started getting cat and fever, so I was like, I got the fuck out of here. <laughs> so um, I met up with Brian, and then uh, he was with Ashley and uh, oh, and Matt. Matt, thank you. Uh, and then they were going to go to Nintendo and we we're going to go in that direction anyway. Um, so we went there and then, you know, we kind of just thought we we're going to, um, you know, get there and then go our separate ways. Um, but, uh, she knew someone and she went to go in. Oh, first of all, we went to the, the entrance and I'm like, it's going to be a two to three hour wait. And there's like a shit ton of people in that lobby right before the Marriott, uh, or that main like grand ballroom place. And um, she's like, oh, I just want to say hi to my friends. And then she went in, and then we're like, okay, we can wait because we thought she was just go and come back out, and you know, we'll go on our way. Uh, and then <laughs> she's like, wait, no, he, 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 she comes out with him. Yeah, and he, comes he, out with him. he looks at us, and goes, yeah. <laughs> One, three. So we're like, we go in, and we're just kind of smile, we have stupid smiles on our face, and like, there's all these people been waiting in line forever, and just like, ha, suckers. <laughs> Um, so we walked through, and, uh, to get that, uh, we had to play three games, um, or at least three games, and, um, I play, what did we play? We played a couple lives of, um, Mario Maker 2. Mario Maker 2. Luigi, yeah, Luigi's Mansion fun. 3. Which, is, some of them was weird, yeah, Luigi's Mansion 3 was pretty cool, um, uh, <laughs> because I hadn't played since the first one, so it was, it was kind of a trip that's been, like, at least 17, 16 years since that came out. Um, and then I was going to play a third game or I, I was just going to completely let it go at that point. But then she kind of pressured me because like Brian got one, Matt got one and, um, she got one or a link. And, um, I was like, okay, fine. So I went over to Marvel Ultimate Alliance, which I guess is another story in itself. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, like I just showed them, I did what Brian did. I just... Well, I didn't do what Brian did exactly. Brian actually showed the game. 
Uh, I just showed my receipt for, I pre-ordered it. And he's like, okay, cool. And then he just gave me a stamp. And I went back and got Link. So that's the story behind that. Uh, also for being a My Nintendo Club person, I got these Splatoon 2 um, keychains. I don't even play Splatoon, so I just have them. <laughs> um, so yeah, that that's the uh, Nintendo story pretty much. Um, and that's all my free stuff I've, I got. Um, so in terms of things that I got for other people, um, I got these from uh, Patrick uh, Ballesteros uh, for Anthony. Except for this. Except for that. Yep. Except for that. That goes over there. Uh, so, oh, it's just this, is, oh, this is all Anthony's stuff. Yeah. Um, so, Love uh, Love 3000 and Infinity Love and Captain Buhai and three John Wick stickers. Um, this, the list is actually a lot bigger, but then Anthony found out that a lot of things were um, online. So, he just ordered those ones online and sent me to get these ones. Um, the Thanos one was a Thursday exclusive, and I bought most of these on Thursday, and the Love 3000 one was um, a Friday exclusive, so I had to go back and stand in that horrible Caps line. Uh, which is crazy, because it's, you know, he's an artist alley, and he has a line, and it's it's capped all the time, so there's that. I uh, also grabbed um, sorry, Jimbo, uh, Yojimbo um, pin for him as well. Um, the other thing... Uh, that I got for the Hasbro booth. Um, the magic set is for An uh, for Andrew. He just, you know, <laughs> you can see Mark. Yeah. <laughs> reflection. Um, uh, that's for Andrew. He just, you know, I asked the group if anyone wanted it, and he was the only one that said he wanted it. So I was like, okay, fine. Um, these are from the Weta Workshop um, for for Kate, Gladriel, and Boromir. And apparently, Boromir just came out. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And then from the Dark Horse, was it Dark Horse? Yeah, Dark Horse, a Critical Role um, pin that Kate had asked for. Um, another thing that I got was for one of my X-Wing friends, uh, Theron Treason, the um, the alternate art cover. It also came with a, a Chiss pin. I don't know which way this is supposed to go, but <laughs> that's stapled, whatever. <laughs> uh, and that's pretty much everything that I bought for other people. Um, and the free stuff. So for myself now, <laughs> uh, where do we start? I guess we can start like in somewhat, um, somewhat chronological order. So my very first purchase at the con was this foil print from Chasing Artwork. Uh, obviously a huge fan. Um, yeah, yeah, shit. done. Um. Yeah, and then that <laughs> stuff over there. Uh, so I was super stoked to like run over there during preview night and I got one of 100. Uh, or number one of 100, so really pops. Uh, so yeah, there's that one. Um, got the Kshatriya. So to add to the Unicorn Collection and to also another one to add to the Unicorn Collection is the Banshee. So I really hope when he comes out with the, the Fenix, it's in a gold foil too. So at least that one, it makes sense. <laughs> Uh, I didn't want to get the gold foil of this because it was just going to be kind of weird. Um, got the tall geese, which is also new. So that's going to go in the right next to Epion on that wall. And then for the first time, well, I guess the Iron Man was um, the first non Gundam one, but for the um, the first, uh, I guess, Star Wars prints that I got were this um, Jedi and Sith kind of um, compilation. So this one's the Sith one, and she's taken down um, a bunch of X-Wings. Here on this one, uh, this one is a Grey Jedi, because uh, she's dual wielding a blue and a red, uh, and facing off against an AT-ST. -AT -AT and then this one's a Jedi that is going up against an AT-AT, -AT, or at at at, at and it's already taken down one at at And this one's this one he had last year too, and it's um, Darth Vader with a bunch of TIE Fighters and Falcons there, the uh, couple Y-Wings and X-Wings too, so I've always had my eye on this one, and this was actually the last day that I bought it. Um, so yeah, about a total of seven prints again from, from Chasing Artwork, <laughs> but he did give us a pretty solid deal, so that kind of helped me stay under budget. <laughs> um, 
So, I guess we'll go here with the Q figs. Um, that was yesterday. That was on Saturday. Like, I don't know if you can actually see it. Uh, but Phil told us about it and we ran into it, and I was like, oh, these are actually kind of nice. And then Mark had to go ahead and tell me a way that, or suggest a way that I should um, display these. And I was going to, he said to do it back to back. I'm like, shit, that's a good idea. And they look really good. Uh, so I got those. Who are they? Uh, one's Captain Marvel and one is uh, Wonder Woman. So, nice. yeah. Uh, I got this office bobblehead from Ryan. Uh, I was just as a thanks, so nice. that was super cool of him to get that for me. Um, heading over to Bluefin. Um, oh, this also got from Bluefin. This is uh, <laughs> this is just this is only eight bucks. It's a small Falcon um, model. I don't even think it has a scale on it. I didn't yeah, see one. one scale. Yeah, but I'm just gonna use this as like grid boost for um, uh, for my data pad case. So it's not actually gonna be built into a Falcon. Um, so yeah. How uh, very Star Wars it is. Yeah, right? <laughs> uh, and then there's, um, oh shit, that's why I had it sideways. And then the two kits that I bought from, oh, this is, I didn't buy this from, that was from somewhere else. This is from Robot for less, I'll put that over there. Well, I'll just leave it here. <laughs> you can lead into Robots. Yeah, I'll, I'll lead into Robots for less. Um, it was the, so one thing that I bought, the first thing I bought from, from Bluefin actually is this hat. <laughs> um, the Earth Federation hat. Uh, they had it on sale at AX, and I didn't want to get it because I didn't, I couldn't try it on yet. And then um, West West bought him day one. He bought one uh, Earth Federation, one Xeon one, and I asked to try one on, and it fit perfectly, or like how I prefer um, my hats. So yeah, so I bought that one, and then Vampy was giving me a, giving me <laughs> shit for <laughs> for having Earth Federation hat on. Uh, so yeah, but then my second purchase from Bluefin was um, this uh, SD Three Kingdoms um, uh, Sinanju set, which really just drew me because it had it comes with a bike. <laughs> so I was like, that's fucking cool. <laughs> it's just you know the sun, the bike is cool, and this is my primary reason for buying it. And the Sinanju is a bonus, so because I like the Sinanju. Uh, and then also got a blind box or blind bag. Lucky bag B. Um, me and Fernando both got blind bags. He got A and B. Uh, I don't think there was that much of a difference, but um, I got a an Assault Kingdom um, final final battle uh, full armor uh, unicorn, and this is usually like thirty bucks yeah. for such a small thing. Uh, I also got an Assault Kingdom uh, Suzabi, and I think this was about twenty bucks. And then I got a Gundam Converge um, Exia. So all these things are just going to go on my desk at work. Uh, and then I also got the first Gundam that I bought. <laughs> um, G Gundam. Right? Yeah, G Gundam. <clears throat> Is, that was the first... Uh, I actually bought this at um, Robot for Less three years ago. Yeah. And it just... I never got around to building. You never built it. And yeah. then you I, gave it. I sold yeah. it to Jonathan because he loves uh, he loves that series. Um, so moving on to Robot for Less, uh, the first thing I bought was today. It took me four days to buy something. It was this one to sixty um, Exia, um, and you know, like I, I've I've been wanting the perfect grade, uh, but don't want to pay perfect grade prices. Uh, so I got this. It was uh, it was on sale, last day sale. And then speaking of last day sales. Um, at the very last minute, our little Gundam like s buying spree where we got Edward Sebastian bought something and then Brian picked something up and then Ryan picked something up and I was like, fuck it, I'll do it too. So then I picked up the C-Packs, um, which ended up being slightly cheaper at uh, here, or slightly cheaper at um, Robot for Less than at Bluefin, because um, he marked it down to 20%. <laughs> so that's why, that's why I got the C-Pack. <laughs> Yeah, secret. Tell anybody. Uh, so, lastly, I guess I didn't go in chronological order like I said I would. Um, I got the chibi, uh, Usa Usa Usagi, what, uh, Jimbo. Wow, I'm <laughs> I'm losing it right now. I just got super tired. Um, uh, the enamel pin and a sticker. Uh, so that's cool. And then I also got these. Um, I got a from Boom Studios. 
the uh, WWE Women's Evolution um, uh, trade. Uh, but to add on to it, I also got uh, Becky Lynch autograph. Um, who won a random uh, like it was just random because uh, Jeff um, he just gave me this link and he's like, oh yeah, just sign up, it's free anyway. I'm like, okay, yeah, whatever. And then I get a text like an hour before it was gonna happen that you know I won the opportunity, which he also won, so that's cool. Um, to get Becky Lynch and Rey Mysterio, so I got Becky Lynch, and then I gave the uh, Rey Mysterio one to um, to Fernando. So to segue to that, Fernando's uh, Fernando also he left some stuff. He bought um, some stuff from Hasbro. Oh shit, Hasbro! Sorry, and I also got the Sith Trooper <laughs> exclusive. Um, so going over to Fernando, he left these out at my house. He like, had to leave early because he had to work on Sunday. Uh, but he also, he bought, um, the Power Ranger and the White Ranger set. He also bought, um, the, um, Boba Fett, uh, exclusive from Hasbro. Uh, and then he also bought two prints from, uh, hmm. from Chasing Artwork. He got the Batcave, because he's a huge Batman fan. And he bought the, uh, the controllers. So... And that's it from <laughs> this, this first side. So yeah, overall, I think I did an okay job. I, did, I didn't overspend like last year, and I didn't go super overboard with buying a bunch of shit. So, I already have a bunch of shit to build. <laughs> so, yeah. Overall, happy about what I got. Cool. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna hand off over here. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so me, uh, I'm not going to go any particular order other than just straight through it. So, obviously, uh, big fans of uh, Chasing Artwork, so I like to get ones that, like, nobody else has, so we got this uh, Barbados being, uh, you know, like, in, in a hangar. It's pretty cool. Uh, a lot of, uh, you know, tiny details. Yeah. Going yeah, on. Just little guys. Yeah. yeah. And plus, I want more horizontal art, because uh, I have some horizontal spaces to, you know, fill up on mm -hmm. the walls. Mm-hmm. Uh, next thing we have, uh, oh, so, yeah. Uh, I've been collecting these comics, and then, uh, you know, I wanted to, you know, finish the set, mm -hmm. but, uh, the guy at, uh, Mass Republic gave me a deal, he said, like, hey, man, you spend that much amount of money, I'll give you just, like, uh, you know, two variants, a, a bag, and this pin. So, yeah, we got <clears throat> Lucha Brothers number one, Tenebulous Jr., Solar and Super Astro number one, Conan and, <clears throat> and the Ambassadors. And then also, I got a Rey Mysterio uh, variant cover that I thought well, I was just going to be like, okay, we'll already have this. Give me the variant. But then right after that is when Don got the Rey Mysterio autograph ticket. So we actually got Rey Mysterio to sign it. Nice. Rey Mysterio 619. Cool. And obviously, since I love, uh, you know, Royal Wrestling, I bought every single Boom Studios trade paperback. WW, that was WWE related that I don't already own. So the Women's Evolution, NXT Takeover, the Phenomenal One, and just Volume Three of the main series. Nice. Yeah. This I didn't buy at Comic Con, but I already owned it, and I knew Alt Balthazar and uh, Franco were going to be at Comic Con, so I had them sign it. We got a uh, Frank Franco there, Art Balthazar, nice. and uh, it's already been signed by Christopher Daniels mm -hmm. because uh. You know, uh, CD works with uh, Fernando at Universal Studios. Cool. And then this thing. Story time. <laughs> struck out on this last year. It sold out when I was trying to get it. I kept coming back and kept telling me, like, hey, man, sorry. Like, come back tomorrow at the end of the, the con. Nope. And Don and I were just walking around, and I was like, you know what? Let's go take a look at Dark Horse. Saw it immediately, and I was like, don't even hesitate. <laughs> yeah. Wanted it. Got it. Uh, I'll probably look through it later. Still sealed. Oh, and then we got the Gumpla. This was uh, yeah, my random purchase at the end of the con. The Galbaldi. And then in the Diver Nami. I was actually looking for uh, something else, but we got Wes Sniped. Wesley Wes Sniped. Wesley Sniped. <laughs> yeah. Ryan's not the only one who's been Wesley Sniped, so... <laughs> <laughs> a couple other random things I also got the Usagi Yojimbo from uh, Stan Sakai 
Oh, this one? Dude, so we just saw, uh... Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder walking around the floor and, like, we're just like, Yo, man, what's up, guys? And they're like, started tossing us these pins, so we got their, yeah, their podcast pin. Oh. Uh, yeah. Rocket's over there looking at us. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this right here. Oh, God. So, oh, so much salt. A little story about it. I didn't buy this at Comic-Con, but I pre-ordered it on Best Buy three days before Comic-Con started. And had it shipped here to Don's house, who had also pre-ordered the game from Best Buy. Had it shipped here to his house, but he had pre-ordered it what months ago? Yeah, June fourteenth. June fourteenth. <laughs> it arrived. Mine arrived at Don's house a day before the release date. Meanwhile, Don still doesn't have his. That's terrible. It's coming tomorrow. <laughs> Bunch of jerks. Stupid UPS. I don't even know why they chose UPS. Whatever. Right. Also, this, uh, we were walking around um, uh, Sunday, so really only got this because, like, I saw the, you know, Kaiju Mono picked it up, and I was like, is that Kota Ibushi on the cover? It is. And it is Kota Ibushi, so Kota Ibushi. I was just like, yo, guys, we gotta get this. I don't know what this is about, but not only is Kota Ibushi on the cover, Minoru Suzuki's on the back. Yeah. <laughs> So random. Minoru Suzuki drop kicking a kaiju. Yeah, I wonder what other New Japan stars are going to be in there. <laughs> yeah, or you know, uh, anything. What year is that made in? Anyway, this is uh 2016. Okay, so it's not too old. Yeah, yeah, three years ago. Yeah. So we're gonna watch this. I don't know. It's Eventually, about. yeah. It's gonna be random. Yeah. Now uh, winding down. Um, from J List. Ooh. Uh, oh my. Yeah. Got this little sticker. Because it came with this button that says, I bought hentai from J-List. Because I did buy some hentai. And uh, we're going to... Yeah, uh, yeah, there you go. Oh, shoot. There it is. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, but, It exists. It's yeah, a thing exists, that exists. Yeah. yeah, yeah. By the way, if you notice, there's, uh, there's three books over here. Only one of them is mine. <laughs> because uh, we're going to move on to... Oh, that's a hell of a transition. Well, I also got a sticker... And a button because these two books belong to me, so I don't I don't want to bring them out. <laughs> we we try to tape them as much as we can so that uh, uh, Brian or whoever edits this, this doesn't have to do too much uh, blurring out and and censoring. But yeah, um, what some people might call filth, I call treasure. So I bought two. Let's go with our titles. Uh, so they mine's do. called Kogal Sluts and whatever. Yes, and mine's called the first one. Way on the left is uh, the job of a service committee member, and then the other one's called Shameless because I am I'm shameless. Um, yeah, so that was the lewd pickup. I actually bought more lewd stuff at Comic Con than. I did it at AX. I should have bought it over there because at least uh, you have the privacy of being in the R18 room or area. <clears throat> Not that I'm embarrassed to pick these up. I wasn't. I bought them. But, you know, privacy. You know, Just don't expose the youngins to this stuff quite yet. So, moving on. Let's start from moving from filth to something completely different. Um, let's start with this. So, this was actually a little flyer um, with an artwork that was commissioned. And I picked this up. It was a free giveaway at the Remembering Stan Lee um, panel. And it was basically just a hour-long eulogy with um, some some uh, fans. Well, all everybody was a fan. Uh, but some of them were prominent industry people, and some of them were just regular people. And they all just told stories about meeting Stan and how Stan sort of intersected with their life and changed their life for the better. And uh, I could not stop crying <laughs> during that panel. It was It was hard not to tear up. Um, especially since we lost him not too long ago, so um, hearing all these stories about how Stan changed their lives just really was just um, it was it was a panel worth um, going to. So yeah, they, they gave away this and a button that's on my backpack, which I did not bring. Um, and then moving on from that, we have a series of patches. I went on a sort of a patch bender. <laughs> Um, starting with Cowboy Bebop. I'm probably going to put that on my backpack. And then next is the Rebel Alliance logo. That's going to go on a hip pack that I'm going to buy in the future for um, some future 
semi Star Wars bound doing Star Wars cosplay thing that we're gonna do when we uh, next time I go off planet to Batu. And right next to that is a Star League patch from the last Starfighter, which is really cool. This is a possible cosplay thing, and if not, then I'm just gonna put on a badass flight jacket. Um, same thing with the next patch, which is the Strategic Scientific Reserve, the SSR. This was the entity that um, led to the founding of S.H.I.E.L.D., as we know it. But this was the entity um, that was post-World War, well, maybe during World War II, but post -World, during World War II, post-World War II organization. Agent Carter was a part of that organization, and I would love to do a sort of uh, World War II-ish cosplay, but instead of being just a normal um, army officer or something like that, I am part of the Strategic Scientific Reserve. After that would be G-Force. <clears throat> This is from uh, Godzilla um, from the Millennium series, um, and it's a obviously it's a force that's going against Godzilla, and uh, yeah. Uh, then the one after that is actual a real mission patch. It's not the actual mission patch, but it's a replica of um, the mission patch, uh, the Mars Exploration Rover A, um, which was Spirit, and it launched in 2004, and unfortunately stopped working in around 2010. Um, it got stuck in a soft patch of sand on Mars, and uh, because of that, it was uh, put in a position where its solar ray was not getting enough sunlight to power up its batteries, and so we lost contact with it back in 2010, but I thought it was a, it's a really cool uh, mission um, patch. It has Marvin the Martian. It's pretty cool. It's very appropriate. Moving on to the next spot side, um, two pins I picked up at yesterday's booth. This was in a Comic-Con exclusive deal, it was a two-pack, so we have uh, Ultraman and Bemilar, which is really cool. Um, and then right next to that is the Beast Kingdom pin, <laughs> and speaking of Beast Kingdom, god damn it, uh, <laughs> that's the only thing I got from Beast K Kingdom. Um, prior to this year, I believe, they were really known for these um, sort of egg-shaped, kind of chibi Marvel characters. They're really detailed, really expensive, but they were kind of oddly proportioned, and I wasn't really, you know, into that. But this year, they came out with like a whole set of other things from like Disney, from like Disney and Marvel and and, and uh, DC properties, right? And um, one of the things that I wanted to get was a, a Steamboat Willie. Um, a Steamboat Willie display piece is really cool. It, they call it D stage, D -stage. and they all—they're all little like scenic diorama things of different. Um, at least for this one, just different Disney franchises. And the one that I wanted was Steamboat Willie, and I probably post a picture somewhere here because I took a picture of it. <laughs> um, and I thought to myself, "Oh yeah, that looks cool. I'll pick it up later." And then uh, I would go the next day. I would look at it and like, "Yeah, that's still really cool." And this is like on Thursday, and like, "I'll just pick it up later." Then I go to Friday, and then I'm like, that thing that I wanted to pick up, I'm going to pick it up right now. I go there, and um, this is probably going to come out before the full Comic-Con video that we have comes out, but uh, by the time we got there, there, the whole sign that had the whole you know list of everything that they had was just practically two-thirds of it was already sold out. And unfortunately, the thing that I wanted to get, the Steamboat Willie D-Stage, um, thing was one of the things that was sold out. I was like, God damn it. But then I asked the dude, like, yo, like, are you guys gonna get any more? And he's like, nah, sorry, we're not gonna get any more. But if you come by on the last day, um, around noonish, we'll, we will be selling, you know, um, all the display stuff uh, for a discounted price. And then I was like, oh, cool, thanks. That was Friday. And then, you know, as Sunday rolls around, I show up. And I asked the dude, it's like, yo, um, are you guys starting to sell these things yet? He's like, yeah, 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 we will. Just just come back at noon. And then uh, and it was like 10.30 when I asked that. And I was like, uh, do you, should I just wait here? And he's like, no, 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 totally don't wait here. Like, uh, you should just have fun and come back around like 11.30 or something. And then, and then uh, yeah, just get in line. So that's what, exactly what I did. Thinking, oh, cool. All right. And then we did a few other things. Um... I uh, looked at other stuff. With J-List. Yeah, with the J-List. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't buy, we were scouting the loot, but we didn't buy any loot yet. And then I came, and then all of a sudden we, we went um, separate ways. You guys went to drop off some stuff yeah, that you guys got. Kind of and then I went over to the Beast Kingdom booth. 
And by the time I get there, there's already a dude with a sign that says, end of line. I go walk up to him. And then the guy that works there, that was patrol like doing line management, was like, sorry dude, line's capped. And I'm like, seriously? And, then, and the time was like 11.20. I arrived, so I, arrived, I thought I arrived early. So they capped the line at 11.20. The dude told me to show up at 11.30, and I was uh, a little mad. And, uh, <laughs> and I, just decided, I just decided to hover, because who knows, right? They might uncap the line. And as that, that's what I did. Uh, I waited. Uh, eventually, I was put in the line. And um, I did wait like the, the 30 minutes. And then they started selling stuff. And then uh, that's around the time that Brian and Don came aboard, like around. Yeah. And then uh, thankfully, Don was actually scouting. Scouting <laughs> and letting me know what was being sold. Yeah. And I was like, okay, cool. That and like he's giving me updates. I'm like, okay, cool. That's being sold. That's fine. I don't want that. I don't want that. And then about like what, 15 minutes or no, yeah. not even 10 minutes. 10 in. minutes in, like about like the sixth person or something like that. Yeah. So. All of a sudden, I get the me the dreaded message. Yeah. Oh, Steamboat Willie's gone. I'm like, fuck. I'm like, okay, there's a plan B. Um, they have a little Steamboat Willie minifig. I'll I'll try to get that. No one's gonna get that, right? And all of a sudden he's like, "What are you talking? What are you like?" First of all, he's like, "What are you talking about? Yeah. You wanted mini? What yeah. are you talking about?" Yeah. I was like, mini. and then like, did you mean mini? Like, because I knew there were there was a mini one, so I was like, "What do you mean?" And then I I told Brian came over and he's like, "Don wants to know which one you're talking about." And I like I pointed that. He goes back to Don, and then Don's like, "Yeah, they sold. All yeah, like, they there's like a bunch of people that like basically bought the whole two set. People later. Yeah. yeah." And I was like, "Fuck!" So I spent all that time. Waiting in line for a chance to buy something and I did not get it. All because I didn't pull the trigger when I should have. So it's, it's, it's all on me. I'm not blaming them. It's all on me. I should have just pulled the trigger on that. So that's my sad decision can't uh, Comic-Con story. So that this will always be a reminder of me and a lesson learned. So if I want, if I want to get something, eh, don't wait. Just pull the goddamn trigger. All hail Waffle King. Yes, I am the Waffle King. <laughs> Raining Waffle King. You can put a fucking goofy ass waffle crown right up here. <laughs> Please do so, but yeah, Raining Waffle King. Okay, moving on. We have a, um, I don't even know if I should be showing this, but in any case, we have a, uh, I go to a, a panel every year um, on Friday night called Wor Worst Cartoons Ever. It's my favorite panel at Comic-Con. They've been doing it for like 10, no, 17 years, 17 years. And uh, it's a panel where um, this guy, who's a, like a cartoon expert, um, basically plays the worst cartoons ever. It's very self-explanatory. These aren't even enjoy. Well, I enjoy watching them, but re realistically, these are just really bad cartoons. And um, after every show, he sells um, he sells the show, all these cartoons in a in a disc for like um, a small amount of money. And uh, this is the first year that I actually bought <laughs> the program. Because, you know, usually it's like, oh, that's cool, that's funny. I'm not going to ever buy it because they are the worst cartoons ever. But, like, this one has, this particular program has one of the, has the, one of the weirdest stop motion shorts that I've ever seen. And I want to inflict this upon uh, this, my group of friends so that they will have nightmares as well. <laughs> should, should we, should we bring things to drink? Maybe. Okay. I think when we, when we watch this, if we watch all of it. We should be in some sort of uh, state of inebriation. <laughs> I think we'll enjoy it a little bit better. But yeah, I, w I really wanted to do this. I really wanted to finally just get one. And I think I'm, from now on, until they stop doing this, I will be collecting these. So this is the first of hopefully many worst cartoons ever discs that I'll have in my collection. Okay, and speaking, going from worst cartoons ever to some kick-ass movies, uh, this is a, uh, um, a well, this was an Anime Depot exclusive. Um, it's Master Z, Itmon, Itmon Legacy. It's a spin-off from the, the Donnie and Itmon movies. It's really badass. It's really cool. And Anime Depot doesn't really do um, exclusives, so this was a big deal for them. Um, this variant cover was limited to 500, and I got, was it, number 321 out of 500, so that's not too bad. And man, the rocket's going crazy right there. <laughs> you want to join in on the fun? No? Yeah? Growl for me. 
Oh, okay, whatever. And then next up, um, uh, as a part of the Kung Fu Hero, a Kung Fu Hero Superhero Extravaganza, um, they showed clips of awesome movies. One of them was Rampant, which is basically a period uh, Korean movie, but with zombies. So that's awesome. And then <laughs> I'll, I'll try to keep this brief because it's getting really uh, this story. Like this video is probably getting really long. But um, this is Royal Space Force: The Wings of Honiomise. It's a pr it's a pretty awesome classic '80s um, anime. I tried getting this at another booth that I will I won't say their name, uh, but they were gonna they were gonna, they were gonna sell me this the same disc for like seventy seven dollars, and I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna pay that much, so I just put it back, and then I just went to the other side, not not too far away, went to Anime Depot, and look at that price. That's just self explanatory. So there you go. I didn't have to pay seventy seven dollars for this disc, and uh. I can't wait to watch it. This is I haven't seen this in years, and this is one of the this is one of those animes that they played like on a uh, was it uh, USA and so or Sci Fi Channel like when they had Japan anime Saturday stuff. This was one of those animes that sort of shaped my 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 imagination and creativity back in the day. All right, next level. Uh, unfortunately, next to the loot. <laughs> um, Usagi Yojimbo, the complete collection with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, mostly written by Stan Sakai with a story with, uh, from Peter, Peter Laird as well, too. Um, after Stanley's passing, um, I never met Stanley, and I kind of feel slightly regretful because I never met the man, like, the man. So I sort of, like, made it, um, a goal to sort of meet all the people, all the creative people that ever inspired me to meet them in person and just say thank you. And one of them was Stan Sakai. I met him on preview night, actually. Um, I didn't hesitate. This is one of those things where I was like, I'm going straight to Stan Sakai. I am not gonna like, fucking bitch out and not, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so I went straight to his booth. I think, it was Don, you were with me, I think, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, so straight to his booth, yeah. picked this up. I was waffling between what to get, but then I was like, I'm gonna get this cause, uh, because of what it means to me, because yeah. the Teenage Mutant Ninja, Ninja Turtles actually introduced me to the world of Usagi Yojimbo. Um, but Stan, Stan was there, and um, he was signing autographs, and so after I bought this, I got him to sign the uh, the front page. So that's uh, that that will be that will this will always have like a lot of meaning for me, and I got to finally just say thank you for like, you know, um, for your work and for you know enriching my my childhood. Um, so yeah, I got I'm glad I got to do that. So. Um, yeah, moving on. Um, speaking of other sort of influential create, Asian or Asian American creators, Greg Pak um, uh, wrote a, uh, is writing um, Met Cadet U right now for Boom Studios. And uh, as far as trade paperbacks, they're on volume three. And um, I was kind of like, like this this series has la uh, has been in existence for a couple years, and uh, I just wanted to pull the trigger and just get the first three volumes because I I just wanted to like support Greg Pak. Um, outside of his uh, sort of big Marvel and uh, other bigger publisher projects, like this is a store, this is um, a project that was um, personal for him because this is originally this is an original project from him. So yeah, decided to pick this up, these up finally, and then we can finally get to all this stuff. Uh, right next to the lewd, we have uh, the Gamera blind box from Kotobukiya. Uh They're all Gamera, so I only bought one box because no matter what, you're going to get a Gamera in it. Uh, it just depends on what kind of what it was, what it's doing. I already opened all these up, so I know what's in them already. And then on the top two, two Monster Hunter blind boxes. Um, one of them is a Kushala Dora, and one of them is a, a Tiostra. Yeah, it's, it's a Tiostra. Yeah, so they're both pretty cool. Well, I'm 13. Yep. And then right next to these are two exclusives. Um, they're both from Diamond Select. They're both cool vinyl robots from pretty awesome retro uh, sci-fi franchises from the past. One's from Forbidden Planet, it's Robbie the Robot. And then the other one is from Lost in Space. It's the robot from that. And they're 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 fucking pretty cool. You probably can barely see them. Yeah. Um, in any case, and the next one is from Tamashii Nations. It's the only Tomashi Nations pickup that I did this year because I was supposed to get movie releases and stuff, and that just didn't plan out. But I got the Spike, Spike Spiegel from Cowboy Bebop. Um, little did I know that when you bought him at the Tomashi Nations booth, you got a free fucking brick wall <laughs> diorama thing. 
um, a choice of a red brick wall or uh, a gray one. I went with gray or with red um, because that's what brick walls look like. <laughs> Just saying. Um, so that was awesome, and this is this is free. So that was that made the the deal even better. Um, moving on from that. The bottom one is from the Bluefin booth. It's a Red Squadron X-Wing Starfighter. It's two X-Wings. One's a 172 scale, the other one's a 144 scale, and I bought this specific version because uh, it's it's the Rogue One branded one, and uh, this X-Wing will go well with uh, the U-Wing and TIE Striker set, uh, Rogue, Squad- Rogue One um, set that's also 144 scale. So I bought this in mind um, for making a future larger diorama set. Right above that. Wait, hold on. I thought I smelled waffles when when you bought that. Oh yeah. So wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's either this or the two at Tie Interceptors because they're down. They're having a deal. Um, if you bought any two Tie Fighters, so either Tie Tie Interceptor, Tie Striker, or just Tie Fighter, bought any two of those. I guess in any combination. Mm. You would, uh, you, you'd only pay 40 And, uh, I was like, that or this, and I, I decided on the X Wing. Um, so that's the story. A little bit of waffling, but I, I bought this. Next up is from Hasbro. Um, this is courtesy of Don. Um, uh, he, 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 uh, picked up the, the Sith Trooper. Because you could buy two. And so yeah. the other one's mine. Um, and then right next to that is uh, Darth Revan, a Black Series, uh, something that I always wanted to pick up. It was a fucking, it's not Walmart exclusive, Walgreens exclusive. Um, and now I have it, uh, I waffled on that for years, so <laughs> that's why I'm a waffle king. And that is that, that is my haul, so there we go, proud of it. I guess it's my turn, no particular order. So I got these freebies, the she Swords and the uh, she Crown at the uh, she panel. panel. And it was right before the Monster Hunter panel. And that's why we were there. So yeah, <laughs> that's why we were there. But yeah, these are pretty cool. I'll wrap this around your head. And then... Um, <laughs> that's what Crown is for. Yeah, this is uh, a Game Boy Advance SP. It was like a booth at the uh, 500 area. It's like a retro gaming booth. And I had to cherry pick these. Because the other uh, the other ones, the shoulder buttons don't work. They didn't work very. They well. didn't work very well. Yeah. Very sticky. Because um, my nephew wrote the uh, the first one that I had. Bastard. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, this felt like I needed to get another one. And then you know you know about these Capcom blind blind boxes. So happy I got this. Does this 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 blind box? I got, uh, last year, there was two, right? So, I got two silver Rathaloses. Last year. It was last year. Yeah. So I was really freaking happy when I got this Baryoth. That you didn't get two silver Rathalos this year. <laughs> and I didn't get two silver Rathalos. But no, I was, but after that, I was really fucking happy that I got the Devil Joe. Oh my God. That looks good. That's awesome. And, you know, such a... Gamble. And then um, I got these Action 66 Capcom figures. One is a blind box, which was this one. Inside I got this Mega Man. Yeah, he's missing a piece. So I built him. I was trying to get Vile. Is there a picture of him? Yeah, right here. Yeah, this, this uh, Boba Fett looking motherfucker. So, I don't know. He's Pissing me off that I can't get them, but you know, any constellation I got Mega Man X, and luckily these aren't blind blind boxes. So, yeah. And of course, I got also same thing that my brother got as well, the Mera bots, uh, blind bots. Then I had the full set of the NECA 2019 uh, Godzilla King of the Monsters figures. Uh, two of them courtesy of my brother Mark. Which was uh, Rodan. And uh, um, like you can barely see anything yet. Oh, I can't see it? Alright, well, yeah. whatever. <laughs> Rodan and Mothra. And then I got the G Man himself, Godzilla. And what's cool about these is that they're actually into scale with each other. So uh, Mothra is actually, you know, small. Such a same thing with Rodan. 
So this is a last minute purchase, Robots for Less. This is part of that 20% thing. And you know, I mean, free. like, yeah. I did a slight waffle between the Dundam wing, I, you know, just trolley shit. But no, nah, this is what I really wanted, 12 bucks. And then um, Bluefin, okay, Bluefin, I got this. Real grade RX-78 too. It's the grandpa himself. You know, it's in time for the 40th anniversary of Dundam. So, uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, one more thing. And another thing that my brother got me is Unity of Heroes. Another Wong Fei Hung uh, movie. So yeah, he got, he got this for me from Anime Depot, right? Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's pretty much it. It's my haul. That's all the haul. It's all the haul, man. All the haul. Yeah. The yeah. yeah. The last thing we want to talk about, it's not really a thing you had to buy, but everyone was able to get one. And it is uh, this year's uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, souvenir book. Comic Con 50 years. And, uh, you know, it's the same souvenir. They give these out for free every year, but I think like some people don't even really realize like what's in here, right? Yeah, because nobody uh, knows. Like, I, I, I read, it. I read it all the time. Like yeah. each year, because there's a lot of good shit that's in there. Um, a lot of profiles, a lot of um, memoriams about uh, past or people, uh, industry professionals that have passed, including Stanley and, and others in there. It's pretty up to date too. Um, they have, they even have Peter Mayhew. He made it like, like as if it's a, a good thing that his death made it into because he shouldn't be dead. But man, it's just, but yeah, there's a lot of good stuff in there. And also, the special thing about this one is that since it's the 50th anniversary, they actually go from um, every year, from the very first year, 1969, all the way up to, well, 2018. <clears throat> and they uh, do like a page highlight, or two page highlight of that particular year. And you get to see like the dignitaries that were there, some of the photographs there where it was at the time, like it wasn't always at the convention center. The convention center wasn't always as big as it was because it was expanded uh, around 1990 or after 1999. And uh, you can even see the increase in attendance. Like look at 2018, 1,000 or 100, 130, over 135,000 people. But let's go back to like 1986, just 6,500. Mm -hmm. So just, just, just seeing how 6,500? Yeah. That's, uh, that's the capacity for Hall H. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Hall H by itself was, um, was the, compa like it was the maximum attendance of, during 1986. So that's crazy how large of a of event that it is. And people say, oh, we should move to, a, they should move this Comic Con to a bigger venue. No venue. No venue anywhere. Out, in the United States anyway, can handle um, the volume of people that this Comic Con attracts. You'd have to go outside of this country to like Tokyo or something to find an infrastructure that can, that is built to um, take this many people at, at the same time. And with with uh, buildings or something, or with, with structures and, and 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 a convention center space that can handle this many people. Because they have they have to believe it or not, Tokyo, Japan, or Tokyo, Japan in general, they have conventions that that dwarf ours in terms of pure attendance um so so like it's like it's it's fine where it is they'll never they'll never find a bigger space in, in in north america anaheim maybe they have the infrastructure to do it but just seeing the growth um by reading this and seeing the growth you can tell that like our convention center and our city in general grew with comic-con we we, I can't see this being anywhere else. Like our city, our town, our town, our city, um, sort of molded itself so that it can contain something like this and do it as well as it can. Because we've been to other conventions where they don't do it well as as, we, as San Diego does. People complain about San Diego a lot uh, <laughs> by being like I can hear it all the time in the lines. But it seems like they've never been to other conventions before. I'm not saying other conventions. Um, don't run their stuff as well as we do, but like San Diego does it the best that they can with um, 
like the type of size that we've had. And reading this, the souvenir booklet, will give you an awesome history behind our growth and why it's like we've gone, we've gotten to 50 years. But just, just, just seeing that very first thing of your college where they say, what's a Comic-Con? That trips me out. Like, what is a Comic-Con? Everybody knows what Comic-Con is now, so. I think, I think uh, the people that started it back in 1969, they, they created a monster, but God damn it, that's an awesome monster. <laughs> and, I, I, and, uh, and I hope we have uh, 50 more years of this. Comic-Con 100, how's that gonna look like? Right? Yeah. It's gonna be in space. <laughs> <laughs> this is the only place where they oh, can handle. Go. It's gonna be on, on the moon. <laughs> New San Diego. <laughs> Just oh, so they wait. can keep it as the San Diego Comic-Con. <laughs> the NSDCC. All right, guys, well, that was our whole video. <laughs> <laughs> weird way to cut it. <laughs> I, I, it is my fault. I went rambling about you know, so, Comic-Con. Whatever. It's fine. It's, it's, it's fine. It is what it is, right? <laughs> Alright, bye guys. Bye. Really bye. Decision King. <laughs>